Hi, welcome to Book Buzz. My name is Jade and I work at the Billie Jean King Main Library. Book Buzz is our monthly feature that highlights new and interesting books um, aimed at, at adult audiences. So this month I'm going to highlight a couple of titles that were published mostly in November and recent months um, and they can all be found in our catalog so you can check them out from the library. Um, I'm also going to highlight a range of nonfiction and fiction as well. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So the first title that I want to highlight is called Nights When Nothing Happened by Simon Han. This is Han's debut novel. Um, he was actually born in China, but he, ra he was raised in um, various cities around Texas. So as you'll see, he was able to really pull from um, personal experience for some of this novel. This novel um, focuses on Patty and Liang Cheng, who are from China. And when Patty gets a tech job in Dallas, they immigrate to America. Um, they leave their child in China with their grandparents just until they can get set up in America, um, get a house and sort of become um, model immigrants, if you will. And when they do, they bring over their, um, their kid to live in Dallas with them. Uh, things really start to ramp up when Annabelle, their young daughter, starts sleepwalking. Uh, and this starts off like a string of misunderstandings in the community. It really threatens to turn their community against them. Um, there are a lot of themes in this book, familial bonds and trust, unconditional love, um, how to stop burying your history and then still move forward, um, especially as an immigrant in America. Uh, what's, what's very timely about this novel is that it takes a look at the contemporary immigration experience in America. Um, and it really looks at the sometimes very subtle suburban racism. Um, and uh, so Han really does just a really great job of depicting it here. Um, so great novel to start with. Uh, the next book I wanna talk about is actually a nonfiction cookbook. It's called The Flavor Equation, The Science of Great Cooking Explained in More Than 100 Essential Recipes by Nick Sharma. Um, Nick Sharma is actually a writer, a photographer, and um, the recipe developer for uh, A Brown Table. He's based in Santa Monica. Um, what's really cool about this cookbook is that Sharma also has a background in molecular biology, which he brings uh, to this cookbook. And he really takes a look at the foundations of science and how it affects cooking and our eating experience. Uh, he takes what I consider like a five senses approach. So obviously he looks at like the aroma um, and the colors and the shapes of our food and the importance of texture. But he also looks at the emotions that come into play in our cooking and eating experiences as well. Um, and really delves into like the components of flavor and what it all is made up to. Uh, this book has beautiful photographs. Um, some of them are even taken from a microscope so you can really see the texture. Um, so uh, really mouthwatering stuff. So if you're interested, uh, if you like cooking or eating or interested in like how our eating experiences are shaped and the science behind it, this is a great title for you. The next book I want to highlight is called Ties That Tether by Jane Igharo. Um, Igharo was born in Nigeria um, and immigrated to Canada at age 12. Um, similar to Han's book, uh, you'll see she's able to draw from a lot of personal experiences in this. It's also her debut novel. Um, the protagonist of this book is Azir, who uh, also born in Nigeria. And um, at 12 years old, she makes a promise to her dying father that she will marry a Nigerian man um, and preserve the Nigerian culture um, in her family, even after they immigrate to Canada. Her mom jumps right in on this and really tries to keep her in the Nigerian dating pool in Canada. But after one too many uh, match, made by, match made by moms gone wrong, um, Azir ends up at a bar where she has a one night stand and that one night stand starts to develop into more and she starts to develop a relationship with um, Raphael who is tall and handsome and white. Um, so Azir ends up kind of in the cross section of um, really obeying her mother and keeping her culture alive and keeping that promise to her father but then also following her heart. Uh, so this is a romance with a little twist. It's very beautifully written. Um, Nicaro does a wonderful job 
um, depicting the complexity of a, an interracial relationship, um, even in contemporary times. Um, so well worth the read. The next title I want to talk about is called Paper Bullets, Two Artists Who Risked Their Lives to Defy the Nazis by Jeffrey Jackson. Um, I know obviously there's a ton of literature, both fiction and nonfiction, out there on World War II and Nazi um, resistance. And sometimes it feels like maybe all every story's, you know, been told. Um, but this is one that I hadn't heard. I think uh, this might be the first time it's being highlighted. It's about two French women, Lucy Schwab and Suzanne Calherm, um, sorry, Malherm, um, who are better known today as Claude Cahoon and Marcel Moore, relatively famous artists in their own right. Um, they were Parisian avant-garde artists who during World War II lived on the island of Jersey in the British Channel, uh, which of course was Nazi occupied. And their act of resistance was to create paper bullets, which were little pieces of paper that they wrote insults against Hitler, um, calls to rebel, really anything to demoralize the Nazi troops. And they would slip them into soldiers' pockets or um, in magazines on newsstands, anything to kind of push the um, the idea of rebelling and, and, and really hope um, out to the people. Uh, they were eventually betrayed, imprisoned, court-martialed and sentenced to death. They did survive, but even while they were in prison, they still pushed that message of hope to the fellow prisoners. Um, what's even more impressive for this story and for their resistance was that they were lesbian partners who were known for their cross-dressing um, and for creating really gender-bending artwork that was um, degenerate artwork in the Nazi regime. Um, so really impressive story on their part. Um, Again, it can be very hard in some points, but much, very worth the read. The next title I want to highlight is called Plain Bad Heroines by Emily Danforth. Um, this is Danforth's first adult novel, and there is, there's a lot going on in this novel, I won't lie. Um, it is a, it's really a book about a film adaptation of a book about another book. <laughs> and if that seemed hard to follow, just go with me because it's worth it. Um, it takes place in two different timelines. And in today's timeline, you have Merritt Emmons, who's written a book based on a New England boarding school called the uh, Brook Hunts School for Girls. And the book that Emmons has written is based on a, a tale from 1902 at this school for girls um, in which two students, Flo and Clara, are inseparable. And they are obsessed with this young writer named Mary McLean, um, who's written a biography, an autobiography, and they have created a secret club called the Bad Hair, I'm sorry, the Plain Bad Heroine Society. And they meet in this nearby apple orchard, but unfortunately that's also where their bodies are found, swarmed by um, uh, stinging yellow jackets. Um, very mysterious death. And in the next five years, there's multiple more mysterious deaths that happen at this boarding school. And so eventually it's shut down. So Again, back in, in time, this is what Emmons has written the book on. Uh, the book is a huge success, so they're going to turn it into a, a film. And the film's got huge acclaim. They're, everybody's waiting on it. It's uh, cast the lesbian eight girl of the time, Harper Harper, and a former child star, Aubrey well, Audrey Wells. Um, and they all go down to the ruins of this boarding school to film this tale. But that is when... Uh, past and present starts to blur and the line between holiday, holo, Hollywood and reality starts to blur. Um, if that sounded like a lot that going on, it's because there is a lot going on in this book, but it's really, it's chock full of all of the tropes of a Victorian novel and it's very like meta novel. It's well worth it. Um, it it's a very fast read as well for um, as many pages as it is. It's a very fast read, but I highly suggest this one as well. And the last book that I want to highlight is called Singular Sensation, The Triumph of Broadway by Michael Riedel. Um, Riedel was a New York Post theater columnist for a very long time, and he has other books about Broadway. This title is specifically about the decade of the 1990s on Broadway. Um, so when we entered the 1990s, Broadway was kind of in a slump. Um, most of our, our um, theatrical hits at that time were imports, imports from London. Um, Cats, Man of the Opera, Miss Saigon. Um, but Broadway was really ripe for resurrection at that point. So uh, Riedel really focuses each chapter on a different play and story of, of the plays that really 
um, brought Broadway back. So he's got an entire chapter that follows Jonathan Larson as he really turns La Boheme into Rent, which is obviously hugely popular. Uh, he's got a chapter on the infinite, infamous um, 42nd Street feud between Cineplex Odium's Ragtime and Disney's The Lion King and their respective theaters that they redid in order to house the plays. Um, he discusses Tony Kushner's Angels in America and Mel Brooks' The Producers and really all of the plays um, that brought Broadway back and made Broadway um, what it is right now. And it leads all the way up to 2001 and September 11th and um, Broadway really coming back only a couple days later to kind of help um, support the economy and, and the city. Um, this is a really fun book with really behind the scenes, in-depth stories. Uh, Riedel really knows his stuff. So lots of facts and fun stuff. Uh, and especially if you're a theater fan, this is a great book to kind of get you um, past the hump until the, the curtain rises again and we're able to see theater again. Um, so on that note, that will wrap up Book Buzz for the month of November. Um, I've tagged all of these titles in our catalog um, with uh, the tag Book Buzz 1120. So if any of these sounded interesting, just go ahead and uh, go to our catalog and search Book Buzz 1120. Um, a lot of these books come in audio and digital formats as well. Uh, and so even though we aren't open to the public right now, we do have LB LBPL to go at seven different locations. So if you like a physical copy, um, you can just go put one of the items on hold. We'll let you know it's available and you can even schedule your pickup uh, time online from our website at this point. Um, and if you are interested in other programs that we're putting on digitally, you can go to our homepage and um, under online library events. Um, there is always an event going on. We've got them for all ages and something for everybody. And with that, uh, we will see you next month with your next book buzz. And I hope you enjoy these. Thanks.